So before we get into the 11 games that's going to be happening on MLS match week number 6, uh, just like last week, I will not be able to really watch a lot of these games because I'm going to be away again this weekend, this time for a leadership retreat, and I will be doing the review on Monday instead of on Sunday. And this time, I'll definitely do it on Monday because I will be back on Sunday. And actually, to be fair, maybe I can, I can do it on Sunday if I get back early and yeah, basically, I'm going to do the, the review either on Sunday or Monday, and then I have to do the preview for the midweek games, because next week is going to be the first weekend, or the first match week, that we are going to have midweek games. And don't worry, there's only two games in the midweek, so there's that video is probably not going to be very long. And I'm also going to be delaying the video where I was going to talk about coaches that most likely could be fired by the end of this year because I just realized today that there is a CCO game between Sporting KC versus Monterey and I am going to review that later tonight so yeah I don't want to make free video per day that just seems a little bit too much and I don't want to just put out so much video for you guys to watch in a single day but that being said let's actually begin with these 11 games we got six games on this board before I change the board and we start off with the Friday game between the Whitecaps versus the Galaxy so the Whitecaps of course get their first point in their previous game they're currently 0-1 and 3 while the Galaxy are 3-0-1 uh, in the first four games the Whitecaps of course lost to Minnesota 3-2 in their home opener and then lost to RSL 1-0 controversially then they lost 3-2 against Houston before they as I mentioned they just got their first point of the season as they drew against their Cascadia rival, Seattle Sounder, by a score of 0-0. Um, the Galaxy, of course, they won 2-1 in their home opener against Chicago. Then they lost to Dallas 2-0, but, but now have back-to-back -back -back wins after that loss against Dallas by winning against Minnesota 3-2 and then beating Portland in their last match 2-1 so you know when you look at this match certainly the Galaxy are gonna be the favorites in this although you know for Vancouver getting that first point maybe that can get things going for them I mean anytime when you're kind of like off the table and finally get yourself your first point then maybe you can basically start getting a couple more points and starting to get resort in favor of you but you know it's gonna be tough because they're playing against a Galaxy team that certainly has a lot of confidence this so far this season and is a team that is very good on the attack. Now, for Vancouver, in the last game, I was very impressed with the way that they defend. And if they can defend like they did against Seattle, against the Galaxy, then they could get a resort out of this game. Otherwise, if we see what we saw in the Minnesota and the Houston game where the defense was absolute garbage, then expect this one to get really ugly. Um, next up, and now moving on to the nine-game Saturday slate, we start off with NYCFC versus Montreal, and both of these teams com are coming off with absolutely, absolute blowout kind of losses. Um, for NYCFC, they're 0-3 and 1, so they're still winless coming into the first four games of the season. Uh, they drew against Orlando 2-2 in a game that they probably should have lost. Um, then they drew 0-0 against DC United. Then they drew again to LAFC 2-2 before losing to TFC on the road by a final score of 4 to nothing. Uh, on the Montreal side, they won against the Quakes 2-1 in their first game of the season. And then they lost to Houston 2-1. But then they beat Orlando City 3-1 on the road only to lose 7-1 against Sporting KC the very next game. And I believe this is... Not quite sure if this is right, but I think this is this is the last row game for Montreal before they they have their home opener next week. Uh, there might actually be another row game for them, but basically they're starting a pretty long road trip to start the season before having their home opener, not at the Olympic Stadium, but actually at the Stadia uh, Sapato where they usually play most of their game. And you know when you look at this game, obviously for NYCFC they are very desperate. And the pressure is really on Doma and Torrent. I mean, the way that the start of the season, although, yes, they have had a pretty tough schedule to start the season, 
it, it has not looked pretty in terms of NYCFC. And with the talent that this team has, it's quite baffling the fact that they still haven't really got a win. And I know they, they of course, don't have David Villa anymore. And, you know, usually I don't say that one... You know, I know he was an important player, but you would think that he they would still win a couple of games and maybe get a resort out of a couple of games. And in the last game, it just shown that they were just not good whatsoever and that they, they look like they could. this could be a long season for them. Um, but they're, of course, facing a Montreal side that is obviously very tired. I'm not quite sure are they going to get Piatti back in this game. If they do, then that just makes the the... That just kind of relief a lot of Montreal fans because it's clear that without PLT, this team is is kind of a train wreck, pretty much. So, yeah, we'll see how this game is going to go. But now, moving on into the next game, and this is probably the most anticipated game and the game of the week, is DC. They play against LAFC. Both of these teams are top of their respective conference. Um, DC, of course... In their first game, they beat Atlanta 2-0. Then they drew 0-0 against NYCFC. And then they won 5-0 against RSL. And then they, in the last game, they won their first road game in what seems like a while now by beating Orlando City 2-1. Um, for LAFC, they won 2-1 against Sporting KC. Then they won 4-1 against Portland. They drew 2-2 against NYCFC. Then they won 2-1 against RSL before absolutely dismantling the Quakes 5-0 in the last game. And, you know, both of these teams, these two teams are very entertaining to watch. And if you're a person that likes goals and like attractive soccer, this is definitely the game for you because I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of fireworks in this game and that there definitely is going to be tons of goals in this game and I won't be surprised if this game ends like 4-3 or even 3-2 because both of these teams, you know, LAFC, they are the top top uh, goal scorer in terms of the league. They had scored the most goal so far of any team. DC, obviously, so far they already scored 7 goals at home at Audi Field. So, you know, this, this is going to be very interesting to see and it's going to be hard to pick who... Can win this. I would think that DC might have a slight edge because they've been just so good at Audi Field and LAFC. You know they have already play play two game on the road. Um, you know the first one they drew against NYCFC. The second one wasn't really a road game for them because there were so many LAFC fans and they were playing the Quakes. Which you know anytime when you play the Quakes, it shouldn't even be count as a game because you're going to get automatic free points in that. So it's going to be interesting to see LAFC playing on the road against a really good team and see how they do. But other than that, this should be a very, very entertaining match to watch. And I'll probably watch the replay of this game because of how good and how mouth-watering this matchup is going to be. Basically, it's pretty much Wayne Rooney, Lucho Acosta versus Diego Rossi and Carlos Vela in this match. So, yeah, moving on. Uh, TFC. So, you know how last week I talked about how Seattle, with them drawing their game against Vancouver, they were the last team to have not dropped points? Yeah, that's actually not true because TFC, they actually are the only team right now that still have not dropped points. Although TFC have played the least amount of game of anybody in the league uh, as their record is 3-0-0. Well, they're going to be playing against the Chicago Fire that got their first win of the season in the last game. And they have a record of 1-1-2. One, one, uh, TFC, of course, they... They won 3-1 in their opening game against the Union. Then they won 3-2 against New England. And then, as I mentioned just a couple of minutes ago, they beat NYCFC 4-0. While well, for Chicago, they lost 2-1 in their home opener. Then they drew 1-1 against Orlando City. Then they lost 4-2 to Seattle before winning their first game of the season against the Red Bulls. And, you know, certainly I don't think a lot of people thought that TFC would be undefeated right now and that they're the last undefeated team so far this season. I mean, a lot of people coming into this year, including myself, think that this was a rebuilding year for them. This was a year that it's going to be there's going to be a lot of pain and it it was it, it was shown in that in the that two-legged affair between 
them and Independente in the CCO that this looked like it could be a very, very long year. But that's why we play the game. And that's why, you know, for TFC, it just feels like maybe they just don't want to... They don't want CCL to kind of distract them so that they can just purposely play bad. And then when the league starts, they start to look like a team that was a couple of years ago. And they have a chance to make it four out of four wins because Chicago, they're not very good on the road. And although they have started to cut... They did win their last game... Um, one of the biggest problems for the Fire this season uh, has been their defense. At times, it has looked really good and at times looked very bad. And also, their attack, which is very good. But the problem is, they just could not put the ball into the back of the net with all those chances that they got. So, you know, for me, I think TFC could should win this one, knowing how good they have been so far this season. And... You know, we'll see. We'll see how it's gonna go, and you know, maybe some, t maybe Chicago can maybe sneak in a little bit of an upset in this game because there's been some resort where I thought one team was gonna definitely win, and then the other team basically won. So, yeah. But moving on is the Red Bulls, or should I say the struggling Red Bulls, because they are one, one, and two against another team that is struggling right now, and that is the Minnesota United with two, zero, oh, and two as their record. Uh, so the Red Bulls, of course, start the season with a draw, draw against Columbus. Then they won 4-1 against the Quakes. But then that's when the wheels start to fall off. They lost 1-0 to Orlando City at home. And then they lost 1-0 against Chicago in the last game. Well, for Minnesota, you know, the start of the season, they won 3-2 against Vancouver. And then they won 3-0 against the Quakes. And I said, you know, watch out. This team looked like they could be definitely a... A surprising team and could be a team that can make the playoffs yeah I apologize to Minnesota fans in advance of kind of jinxing them because their next two game they lost to the Galaxy 3-2 and then last week they lost to New England 2-1 and you know when you look at these two struggling team obviously the Red Bulls are gonna be coming into this game very angry and they desperately need a win I mean for Minnesota obviously their their home opener is right around the corner and I'm guessing they're just gonna try to nurse their way into the home opener so that they can start start maybe getting into the home opener in in a they're still gonna be in a fighting chance of of potentially getting across the red line and that they still have a respectable record for the Red Bulls however yeah this this is definitely not what they envisioned to start the season and especially the fact that the last two game was supposed to be the easiest game of their schedule and yet they drop both of them so yeah um for the red bulls they really need to win this and it's what's also so interesting is that you know how i said in the beginning of the season the red bulls and atlanta was going to be the class of the east and that they're definitely going to finish top two yeah as of now they're not even in both of these teams are not even across the red line. Both of these teams are near the bottom of the Eastern Conference. I mean, yeah, that's why when you watch my my prediction video, that's why you don't trust them. Because I did warn you guys that I'm not good with prediction. And that that's things that you, you can see in the preseason look like maybe these two teams are going to be the class of the East. But when we actually play the game... Maybe not. Maybe. I mean, after all, this is MLS. It's one of the most unpredictable league in the world. There's some crazy things that can happen week in and week out. And right now, we are seeing it so far this season where teams that were not supposed to do very well are doing very well so far. And then you see teams that are supposed to do very well are not doing very well as well as we thought that they would do in the start of the season. So... Yeah, but overall, I still expect the Red Bulls should potentially be a bit of a favorite in this game. But I won't be surprised if Minnesota gets a win in this. Because if Minnesota gets a win in this, I'm not going to say that they're making the playoffs. Because as soon as I said that, you know, Minnesota f fan, they're going to they're gonna basically keep that in mind. And say that if they start another losing streak, yeah, you basically jinx us saying that we're going to make the playoffs this season. Um, but next up, uh, Columbus, they play against the Revs, so both of these teams actually face each other back in week two, so this is going to be the final meeting between both of these teams, because, you know, each team that gets a face, 
their their conference rival twice and then face their their inter rival conference once this season so this is going to be the final meeting between the crew and new england uh for columbus they drew 1-1 against the red bulls and then in the other meeting they beat beat new england 2-0 on the road then they won 1-0 against fc dallas well they also they did lose 3 nothing against the union but that was during the international break when they had a lot of big pieces that was missing because of the international break then they of course won 2 nothing against Atlanta in that monsoon kind of game uh, for New England they drew 1-1 against against FC Dallas then they lost 2 nothing to Columbus as I just mentioned then they lost 3-2 to to TFC and actually I forgot I forgot there's another loss that should supposed to be on there but I literally right now for right now just saw that I, I forget to put that is that they also lost to FC Cincinnati 2 nothing at at uh, home and then in the last match they will get their first win of the season by beating Minnesota 2-1 so yeah New England you know it definitely feels good the fact that they got a win in the last match because it was doom and gloom for this club before that New England versus Minnesota game and there was definitely a crisis that was growing um, but they're going to be playing against Columbus on the road and Columbus so far you know I got to give a lot of credit to what Caleb Porter is doing doing with this team not only he is off to a great start with this team but this team looked like a team that could be a dark horse heading into this season and a team that could potentially surprise some people in the playoffs and that's what columbus is columbus has for the last couple of years not a lot of people talk about them potentially get, getting very far and yet somehow in the last couple of playoff appearance they have definitely got far into the playoffs and i'm not saying that you know with this early success this means that they absolutely guaranteed to make the playoffs but this is definitely encouraging if you're a crew fan seeing that team which kind of the way that they've been playing it kind of is what the way greg berhalter is playing it's almost like greg berhalter is still with this team and that caleb porter as i mentioned in the beginning of the season in order for him to be successful with the crew he needs to try to to continue what Burholter did with this team and it seems like he listened to my advice and that is exactly what this Columbus team is doing so yeah when you look at this match I think Columbus could potentially get another win against New England you know yes New England did win their first match but this is going to be a tough task against Columbus on the road but that being said let's switch the board now and now talk about Orlando City versus Colorado now before I actually get to this, if you hear like a lawnmower behind and in the background, uh, that's because one of my neighbor is lawn mowing right now, which, yeah, thanks a lot for decided to do lawn mowing while I am doing the preview of these MOS match week number six games. So, yeah, apologize if you hear that in the background. But going back to what I was talking about, how Orlando City is playing against the Rapids in this game. Um, both of these teams are kind of in a similar situation to start the, the start of this season. Uh, Orlando City are 1-2-2 two, and two, and Colorado are 0-2-3. Oh, and three. and you know, if you look at the records, it doesn't look very similar. But when you look at both of these teams, for the first couple of games, there's definitely some promise that these teams have done much better than they have last season. And that there, pro there are some promise that maybe they can sneak in to the playoff as a seven or six seed but having said that neither of these teams with these kind of good performance have got the resort and also there's been time where they shown that kind of 2018 form that they were which was not very good so for orlando city they drew 2-2 against nycfc but they kind of got robbed in that game with a bad bad handball call and then they drew 1-1 against chicago in a game that they gave up a 94 minute equalizer then they lost 3-1 against Montreal and this is really the only game where they kind of looked like 2018 form then they surprisingly won 1-0 against the Red Bulls only to lose 2-1 against DC United although they put up a lot of fight against DC United and they could have probably got deserve a point out of that game consider how many chances that they had in that one uh well for Colorado you know they drew in the snow classical 3-3 against Portland but then they lost against Seattle 2 nothing in a game that they definitely look much better on the road 
but the only problem is they didn't have anything to show for. Then they drew 1-1 against Sporting KC in a game that they probably should have won because they gave up a late goal. And then they lost to Dallas 2-1 until last week where they lost 4-1 against Houston. That was when they looked like 2018 form. So, you know, it's interesting with this game because I think, you know, both of these teams want to get a win in this game certainly for Colorado they want to get themselves their first win of the season I mean as I mentioned before Colorado I think they've been playing much better than they were last se season I mean the if you do not count the last game they definitely have show some sort of improvement although one thing that has definitely not improving kind of gone downhill for Colorado is that they're giving getting a lot of red cards in these last couple of games. I think the last three games they had not finished a game with 11 men on the field. Well, for Orlando C, yeah, they, they've been taking some really tough resort. And as I mentioned before, with some of these resorts that they should have won, either because they blow a late lead or a call that just, just doesn't go against them. You know, yeah, th I, I think... They have also kind of showed some sort of improvement. And, you know, whoever wins this game, they will definitely will feel very good about themselves. And maybe can start a winning streak and maybe start a little bit of conversation that, hey, we can potentially make it to the playoff. But, yeah, we shall see how both of these teams will do. And, you know, for Colorado, you know, this is one of those games that they definitely can win on the road. I mean, so far they have dropped so many home points that I'm... I think the only way they can start thinking about maybe they can sneak into the playoffs is that they got to get resort on the road and this is one that they they need to do well as for Orlando City and the interesting thing about Orlando City is they've been getting resort on the road but they cannot get resort at home like their home record so far is 1 2 1 0 oh, and 2 they have only well actually no they're Home record is actually 0-1 and 2. They still haven't won a single game at home, but on the road, they've been able to get a win and a draw out of it. So, yeah, it's kind of interesting why Orlando City is started to do well on the road, but they don't do well at home. Kind of something similar to what the Galaxy was a couple of years ago, where they tend to do well on the road, but they don't do well on the home. It's very unorthodox, but they certainly need to figure out their road form, and they really want to get a win here so that they can establish some some good form when they're playing at home because after all home games are the one that you want to win those are the one that that you, that are more likely a t mls team is going to get a win than they would be on the road um but next up uh the union they play against fc dallas so the union they're two one and two while dallas is three one and one uh, and the Union are starting to figure things out. Uh, after their first two loss, which they lost to TFC on their opening weekend and in their home opener, and then lose 2 nothing to Sporting KC, they got a draw against Atlanta on the road, and then now they got back-to-back -back wins, a win at home against Columbus, and then a win on the road against FC Cincinnati. Uh, well, for Dallas, you know, they, they have been pretty good so far to start the season. You know, they... They did drew 1-1 against New England, which wasn't really a good resort for them. But they bounced back and win against Galaxy 2-0. Uh, they did lose on the road 1-0 against Columbus. But then now they got back-to-back -back wins with them beating Colorado at home. And then beating RSL on the road by a score of 4-2. And, you know, both of these teams are definitely in very good form. The Union, certainly they have figured out this press system and that they are started to win some games. But now they're going to have to face a team that, you know, this Dallas team is definitely a team with a lot of young, promising, homegrown kind of player. And a team that really kind of reminds me a couple of years ago when they started to do this kind of homegrown project, start putting young guys that is homegrown product and guys that is from their academy in their team and start doing very well. This feels something very similar with FC Dallas and... You know, this is definitely going to be a very interesting game to see and a tough one to call who exactly will win this one because, 
You know, for the Union, as I said, they kind of have figured out with their pressing system, but can they continue as they play against a Dallas team that is definitely look like they're about to make the playoffs as they can continue this kind of good form and their young player just continue to produce throughout this first part of the season. But yeah, next up, um, it's the sad game of the week. And I'm not even exaggerating that this is the sad game of the week because it is the reality. It's a game between two teams that are winless. Uh, the Quakes are the only team that still have not got a single point on the board, and that is a hard fact. While Portland, they have, they are also winless and haven't got a single point on the board since drawing 3-3 against Colorado in that Snow Classico. And both of these teams has only got one point out of the eight games that they have played combined. One point only. That just shows you how bad both of these teams are. And, you know, for the Quakes, I, I hate to, to, to really go over this because you probably have heard this every single week. But I'm going to do it either way. Uh, they lost to Montreal in their opening weekend. Then they lost 3 nothing to Minnesota. Then they got absolutely destroyed 4-1 against the Red Bulls. And then they also got absolutely destroyed at home, or I should say on the road against LAFC 5 nothing, and it just seemed like every resort for the Quakes have just gotten worse and worse as the season goes on. Well, for Portland, like I said, they their only resort and only point this season came in the first game of the season in, this, in the Snow Classical where they drew 3-3 in a game that they should have won. I mean, they were they 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 were up like like two men in that game and yet somehow they still did not get all three points in that one. And then they lost 4-1 against LEFC. Then lost 3-0 against FC Cincinnati before losing 2-1 to the Galaxy last week. And, you know, for Portland, I really think this is a must-win for them. Like, I think, I know it's been it's been rough so far in the beginning of the season. And we knew that this 12-game road trip is going to be very rough for the Timbers. And I think if you're a Timber fan and you look at this 12 game road trip if there is one game that you circle on the calendar and say that isn't that has to be a win it's got to be this one because playing against the quakes you know the quakes are basically like the the santa of mls right now they're giving out free points and giving out present to everybody like it's nobody business like playing against the quakes and getting free points against the quakes is as automatic as the quakes at least concede one goal this season. So for Portland, they got to win this game. And I know it's on the road, but everybody has been able to beat against the Quakes. And the Quakes are just in, they're in a, a downward spiral right now. And, you know, as a Quakes fan, I want to have some hope. I mean, my only hope is that Almeida would eventually turn this around. And hopefully in the summer, we can change this. But right now, there is not a lot of hope in Quakes land. And, you know, by the way, I'm also not attending this game. Not because I'm boycotting this game, but it's mainly because I have a leadership retreat I have to attend this weekend, which kind of conflicts this one. So, yeah. Um, you know, I want to, as a Quakes fan, I also want to say that this game is also potentially a must win for us. But seeing how the resort has gone with us and seeing how bad things have gone it, it's hard to say that this is a must win for and a game that you know when you're facing another winless team you should expect to at least get something going at least even though you're kind of like in a downward spiral but i just have no confidence whatsoever with this team the, the roster that this team it has and starting weekend and week out is like is not even a usl level kind of a starting 11 let alone an mls starting 11 so how do you give me hopes that if you don't you you put a usl level kind of starting 11 against a a kind of below average mls starting 11 and you expect that we're gonna get a resort out of that um and if they do get a resort then certainly i will i i won't be superly happy but I will just be a little bit relieved, but knowing that that's not going to really change anything because the Quakes still have a really tough schedule coming up up at the latter part of April. And then it does get a little bit easier as we head to May. 
And, you know, for Portland, if they do not get three points in this game, then, yeah, I, I don't know what, I don't know how are they going to at least get, get a win on this 12-game road trip. And like I said, this is the one that if you're a Timber fan, you will circle this as an automatic win because when you play against, anybody play against the Quakes, it's always going to be automatic three points unless you do just completely shit the beds, which unfortunately for the Timbers, that's been the case the last couple of weeks. Um, but ne next up, and now moving forward to a little bit happier kind of game, um, is the Sounders versus RSL, although if you're an RSL fan, I don't think happy is a way to describe this game because something tells me this game could get ugly. Um, the Sounders, of course, they won 4-1 against FC Cincinnati in their opening weekend. And let me just write it a little bit better because I kind of scrubbed it a little bit. Then they won 2-0 against Colorado. Then they won 4-2 against Chicago, but then they did drew 0-0 to... Vancouver as that was the first time this season they dropped points. Well for RSL they drew 1-1 against Houston. Then they beat Vancouver controversially 1-0. But ever since that it has just gone all downhill. Uh, they lost DC to DC United 5-0 in a game that they had two men send off. Uh, they put up a very spirited fight against LAFC but ultimately lost that 1-2-1. And then last week they lost 4-2 and this is actually wrong. <laughs> They didn't win 4-2. Like, RSL would think, hey, how, how do we win 4-2 against against FC Dallas? No, that was just my mistake. Uh, so they lost 4-2 against uh, Dallas. And also, RSL coming into this game, they will not have DeMar Krylak because, you know, he is suspended because of that, that red card and that headbutt that he had last week. So, yeah. Good luck, RSL, in terms of playing against the Sounders that certainly are going to be very angry coming into this game. The fact that they dropped points last time and they're hungry to try to score more goals at home. And knowing RSL is not a good team on the road, yeah, it doesn't really do any favorite of maybe giving hope that they can win or get a resort out of this game. But you never know. It is MLS. Maybe Seattle would, would still kind of feel a little bit of the after effect in terms of this one. But I expect the Sounders to be able to win this game against RSL. Um, and then finally, the only Sunday game of this weekend is FC Cincinnati playing against Sporting KC. FC Cincinnati, their record is 2-1-2. and two. Sporting KC, their record is 2-1-1. One, and one. Uh, For FC Cincinnati, their, their first five games, they lost 4-1 against FC Cincinnati. Or against Seattle, as I mentioned before. But then they drew 1-1 against the defending champion. Uh, then they won 3-0 against Portland. 2-0 on the road against New England. But last week they did lose 2-0 against the Union. And that kind of bring them a little bit back down to earth. After they were just on cloud night with, with these free games game unbeaten streak well for sporting kc they did lose their opening game against laefc but then they won two nothing against the union they did drew one one against colorado and then they won seven one against not fc cincinnati oh, i keep making keep making them i keep making mistakes on some of these things so if you're an fc cincinnati fan you know, before you ridicule me saying that you lost 7-1 against Sporting KC, no, it was actually Montreal. I, I made a mistake on that part. And, you know, looking at this game, certainly for Sporting KC, um, you know, they, they're going to have a Thursday game, which is today, against Rayados in that CONCACAF Champions League first leg. And I'm assuming they're probably going to rest some guys in this game because the second leg is the following week. And they're playing against FC Cincinnati team that last week, you know, it was it was a tough loss against the Union. They kind of didn't show up in that one. But they're looking to try to bounce back against Sporting KC. And they have done pretty well against some of the, the tough teams this season, minus Seattle and maybe the Union. Um, and they're going to be probably facing a Sporting KC side that might... Like, even if Peter Ramiz decided to put the same starting 11 from that Riotos and um, uh, Montreal game, I think that, that they're going to be still facing a very tired kind of Sporting KC team. And we saw what happened in that Colorado versus Sporting KC game where it looked like Sporting KC was just very tired. 
because they had they had to like play a midweek CCO game and then they play a weekend game and Peter Vermees elected to not switch his starting eleven and it looked like that might be the same case again in this game against FC Cincinnati. Although in this case, FC Cincinnati would definitely try to take more of an advantage of this than what the Rapids would do. So, yeah, there you have it. That is pretty much all 11 games that I have previewed this weekend. Uh, like I said, I might be able to do the review on Sunday night. I might might wait it till Monday if I needed to and then I also will be doing the preview for the midweek games which there isn't really a lot of midweek games next week but yeah hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do make sure you guys leave a like smash that subscribe button as always let me know in the comments below what do you think of this game and leave your prediction below in the comments and yeah I hope to see you guys next time